Hello, everyone. In the dark theater of deception and cunning, one man emerges clearly from the fray, Victor Lustig. This bohemian from the late 19th century is a legendary figure whose name still resonates today as the ultimate symbol of the art of deception. Lustig, a genius of manipulation and a true master of impersonation, possessed a hypnotic charisma and brilliantly ingenious intelligence, two qualities that allowed him to dupe the most suspicious. Indeed, who could believe that someone managed to sell the Eiffel Tower not once, but twice? Lustig's astonishing audacity, extravagant cunning, and flamboyant panache have made him an unforgettable character in the history of scams. His life is more akin to a work of fiction than tangible reality, and yet, every anecdote is true. Let us embark together on a journey through the subtleties of the most memorable scam in history. An adventure that will undoubtedly arouse your wonder and pique your curiosity. Under the gray and austere shadow of the Bohemian Mountains, in a small village named Hostenay, a boy named Victor Lustig was born in 1890. This birth seemed ordinary at first glance, for who could have predicted that this young boy would one day become one of the most renowned con artists in history? But in reality, Lustig was not an ordinary child. He was endowed with undeniable charm and an uncommonly keen mind which, combined with a successful education, allowed him to speak five languages fluently. These language skills would prove to be a major asset in the years to come. Thus, even before the first breeze of World War I stirred the battlefields, Lustig was already paving his way in the art of deception. With a deck of cards in hand, he thrived on the decks of great transoceanic liners, deceiving the nobility and wealthy with remarkable aplomb. But when the clamor of war echoed, this lucrative source of income evaporated. Always adaptable, in 1920, Lustig turned his gaze to the golden shores of the United States. There, with his erudition and almost royal elegance, he took his art of deception to new heights. The victims of his scams were many and varied, and even included figures like Al Capone, one of the most famous American gangsters. With promises of money printing machines and surefire tips for horse races, Lustig deployed his game of illusion to then disappear, taking with him the fortunes of the unfortunate duped. But Victor Lustig's story doesn't stop there. The year 1925 saw him landing in France, his pockets filled with hard scam dollars from America. However, even for a swindler of his caliber, the frenetic pace of Parisian life cost him more than he had anticipated. Soon, Lustig found himself short of resources. One day, in a desperate move, Lustig scrolled through the pages of a French newspaper looking for an idea, a vein to exploit. His gaze settled on an article describing the difficulties faced by the state in maintaining the imposing Eiffel Tower. One detail piqued his interest, the tower was meant to be dismantled in 1909, its continued presence due to its military usefulness. At the end of the article, the journalist sketched a humorous idea, should the Eiffel Tower be sold? This seemingly harmless comment was about to turn into a monumental scam. Donning the identity of a government official, Lustig launched a tempting lure, the sale of the Eiffel Tower. He designed fake offers and sent them to the five leading scrap metal recovery companies in Paris. Then, he arranged a discreet meeting within the elegant confines of the Hotel de Crillon, a venue favored by Parisian high society and an ideal setting for his dramatic coup. On the day of the meeting, Lustig, under the pseudonym of a representative from the Ministry of Posts and Telegraphs, greeted the scrap dealers with an assurance and professionalism that left little room for doubt. In a calm and composed voice, he revealed the secret, the Eiffel Tower was to be demolished and sold for scrap. Faced with the audacity of the proposal, none of them contested. The highlight of the performance took place during a site visit. With a fake civil servant card, Lustig easily entered the metallic edifice, further reinforcing his credibility. He concluded by announcing that he would await proposals until the next day, thus setting the stage for a historic scam. Lustig's trap had closed on André Poisson from their meeting at the Hotel de Crillon. This business novice, eager to prove himself, became the perfect prey. However, Poisson's wife was suspicious and sowed doubt in her husband's mind. To solidify his deception, Lustig therefore launched into a game of dupes. In a new meeting, Lustig dropped his distant civil servant mask to show himself in a more human light. He complained to Poisson about his meager salary, hinting that a top-up would be welcome. This subtle message, which echoed the widespread corruption among civil servants, managed to dispel Poisson's last doubts, prompting him to accept the offer. The stage was set for the finale of this audacious comedy. Once the pact was sealed, Lustig and his accomplice, Dan Collins, discreetly disappeared into the bustling streets of Vienna, leaving behind a bewildered and deceived André Poisson. To their great surprise, silence enveloped their feet. The newspapers didn't trumpet their audacious hoax, presumably because Poisson, gnawed by embarrassment, did not bring the matter to the attention of the authorities. Scarcely a month had passed when Lustig found himself back in the City of Light, ready to replay his masterstroke. With renewed audacity, he repeated the Eiffel Tower sales scheme. However, his new prospect was not as easy to dupe. 
Upon detecting the ruse, the man reacted promptly by reporting Lustig to the police. The con man was then forced to disappear into the shadows once more, fleeing the reach of the law. However, instead of keeping a low profile and leading a normal life, Lustig turned his audacious gaze towards new transatlantic challenges. Thus, in 1930, the infamous Lustig crossed the ocean to trace a new bold chapter in the colorful narrative of his criminal life. He joined forces with two brilliant men from Nebraska, pharmacist William Watts and chemist Tom Shaw, in an equally, if not more, audacious venture. Their plan? Orchestrate a counterfeiting operation on an impressive scale. Watts and Shaw's duo took charge of the meticulous engraving of plates for printing counterfeit $1 bills. They were the architects, creating the tools of their illicit trade. As for Lustig, ever refined and cunning, he took the reins of organizing a complex network of couriers. Their task was to spread the counterfeit bills throughout the American economy, without any knowledge of the true nature of the goods they were transporting. It was the perfect mechanism of a criminal clock. The operation was a resounding success, injecting thousands of counterfeit dollars, now nicknamed Lustig Money, into the American economy each month. For five consecutive years, the group led by Lustig made their counterfeit currency reign across the country. Unfortunately for them, their very success was the cause of their downfall. The increasing amount of Lustig money in circulation indeed ended up attracting the attention of federal agents. And as one could expect, fate caught up with the infamous Lustig. Thus, on May 10, 1935, his pirouettes in the shadows of crime abruptly came to a halt. The flashing lights of the New York police shattered his elusive aura. Accused of counterfeiting, Lustig found himself between the icy walls of a New York prison. The eve of his trial, however, the cunning Lustig showed that he still had a few tricks up his sleeve. With the skill that characterized him, he turned the sheets of his cell into an improvised rope and managed to escape. But, his taste of freedom was short-lived. Only 27 days later, the long arm of the law caught up with him in Pittsburgh. December 5, 1935, then marked the day when Victor Lustig stood face to face with justice. He pleaded guilty and received a sentence that reflected the gravity of his actions. 15 years in Alcatraz, the notoriously inhospitable prison on an island off the coast of California. For his audacious escape, he received an additional five years. Lustig, therefore, spent the rest of his days in chains, far from the freedom and schemes he cherished. Over the years, his health inexorably eroded. Indeed, on March 9, 1947, pneumonia overtook him, leaving him weak and defenseless. Two days later, this extraordinary illusionist, this virtuoso of scam, took his last breath. The location of his final departure was far from the heights of the Eiffel Tower and the luxurious rooms of the Creon Hotel. As he was confined to the U.S. Federal Prisoners Medical Center in Springfield, a city in Missouri. Thus ended the tumultuous epic of Victor Lustig, the man who had not only dared to dream, but also staged, the incredible feat of selling the Eiffel Tower. A story of bravery, daring, and artifice, which will forever echo in the annals of infamy. In conclusion, the life of Victor Lustig is a real picaresque novel, a bold anthem to human ingenuity. From the Parisian pavement to the cold steel of Alcatraz, the scam artist orchestrated a symphony of illusions with dazzling maestria. Nicknamed the King of Impostors, Lustig knew how to play the notes of human credulity, scratching the tableau of history with a blazing audacity. His most famous melody? The sale of the Eiffel Tower. Not once, but twice, but every ballet has its last dance, and Lustig's was silently drawn by the cruelty of the disease, far from the limelight that he had so adroitly illuminated. Today, his echo persists, a vibrant reminder of incredible human audacity, an extraordinary score engraved in the history of the great theater of imposture.